Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. I'm Dana Farino along with Andrea Tanteros, Bob Beckel, Tucker Carlson, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. I've been really looking forward to, to getting out of D.C. I'm like a, a caged bear, and, and every, every once in a while I, I break loose. So you don't know what I might do. Yeah, true. That was President Obama yesterday in Minnesota talking about letting loose when he's not in Washington. On well, the Supreme Court would argue that he's been plenty loose in D.C. The nine justices put a stop to his recess appointments, voting unanimously against his presidential overreach. National Journal's Ron Fournier and constitutional attorney Jonathan Turley say the president should have known better. The Supreme Court basically argued that the Senate makes its rules, not the president of the United States. <laughs> You know, I, I learned that in third grade civics class, and the president should have known better. He's a constitutional attorney. This is becoming something of a serial violation for the president. You know, what the president did here, I can't imagine any competent lawyer would look at it and say, yes, you do have that authority. Uh, it was clearly an effort to circumvent. The president's made a habit out of taking executive action, and the White House is signaling he's about to do so again, and this time on immigration reform. The president has tasked his Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, uh, with reviewing what options are available to the president, what is at his disposal, using his executive authority to try to address some of the problems that have been created by a broken immigration system. I'm not going to apologize for trying to do something while they're doing nothing. Mm. Do you remember, Greg, in 2011, the We Can't Wait yes. campaign that President Obama um, started because he said Congress wasn't doing enough, so he's yeah. going to try to do more. So then he does more, and then the Supreme Court says you actually can't do that in particular. So Obama deals with concerns about overreach by the executive by announcing more overreach by the executive. Is that genius move? No, yeah. Uh, President Obama has the right idea. He's like, a, uh, he's like a Don Juan on a first date. He's trying to round the bases at every opportunity. So he's trying to get away as, with as much as possible, knowing that he will get away with something. And the worst thing that can happen is somebody says no. And that's the, where the myth of this whole lame duck presidency is. He's not a lame duck. The media is the lame duck, and he's turning our country into a lame duck. But he ain't lame. He is, he is galloping like a wild stallion over our dreams. No, and and yet, yeah. no, no does not mean no for Obama. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's not, not with law. Tucker Carlson, everybody, he's here just for one night. Um, <laughs> well, let's listen, Andrea, to President Obama talk about the other thing that has a, is on Americans' mind, which is all the scandals that are going on. He has a particular adjective he likes to use. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the news that's coming off is just, these are just Washington fights. Isn't that true? They're fabricated issues, they're phony scandals that are generated. It's all geared towards the next election or ginning up a base. Um, it's not on the level. Is that John Kerry behind him? <laughs> yeah. And it was Charles Krauthammer doing apparently a lip sync, an amazing one. I was going to say, President Obama. Obama. Does, it does a great um, imitation of President <laughs> Obama. Wow. Andrea, when 76% of the people say that they believe that the administration destroyed evidence uh, in the IRS uh, scandal, do you think it's wise that the president says it's phony? I think he thinks it's wise because if the media is not reporting on it, and you had the New York Times today saying, yeah, we were a little late to the game, why does he have to use any other adjective? If no one's going to call him on the carpet, he can say it's phony for a long time because guess what? The media agreed with him for a very long time. Here's what I don't understand. How he can continue to use the word phony after the VA scandal. That's the point where I would have said, okay, I can do this with Benghazi. I can, I can talk about the IRS as, as a political scandal and, and the media will go along with that one. But I feel like when the VA scandal hit and you had dead veterans, that was the point where the president had to say, okay, let's get serious. We can't trivialize these things and lump them all together. And he hasn't done that. And it shows somebody who is just profoundly so out of touch with his polling and the way people really are starting to see what are legitimate scandals. Let me ask Bob about that part. And also because, Bob, earlier this week, President Obama did an interview with MSNBC. Mm -hmm. Then he did another one with George Stephanopoulos on Air Force One. Plus, he had the public events in Minnesota that I think were, that was a smart tactic. I like the day in a life thing that they're trying to do. 
But why do you think the president continues to do so many television interviews? Uh, I, I, I don't know, and I wish he wouldn't, but let me try to clarify something. The Supreme Court uh, came down on one particular appointment because the Senate was out for three days. It was not a blanket uh, c cutting of the president's executive power to do recess appointments. That's one thing we keep in mind. The other thing is that when you talk about 86% or 79%, 76%. 76% of the people uh, think that there was a scandal. Uh, now, I've sat at this table and listened to Greg particularly dump on all the media for being quiet. Now, with all due respect to the Daily Caller and Fox and Rush Limbaugh, 80 percent of the American people did not learn about this because other media did not report on it. They, of course they did. And so it is, uh, they formed an opinion on it. So when we so say we're the only ones who go out there and do this, it's a bunch of Well, crap. no, what I, I mean, said was that the president is saying that it's phony, but the American people are saying we don't think that it's phony. No, that's, I'm what, that's what the disconnect yeah, that, is. No, no that's what my point, though, is that that many Americans, or the Americans believe that, right? That's not good for Obama. But the idea that somehow they didn't get that from the news, they only got it from the right wing, either Tucker or, or Rush Limbaugh, is crazy. Well, are you going to take that, Tucker? Yeah, I, I, Bob, I don't think you're showing due respect, as you put it to the Daily Caller. I'd, like I'd like to see you write for us. Um, no, you no, look, the, look, the president's not talking to us, actually. He's not talking to me. He's not talking to a huge percentage of the country. They decided, right after the reelect, they're speaking to their demographic, to their voters. And by the way, his calm comes from a lot of things. It's opposed to some extent, but partly it comes from a, an advanced understanding of demographic change. They believe in the end they'll be vindicated because America's changing, which is kind of a creepy thought if you think about it, but that's what they think. But you didn't answer my question. And then what, the question, your question, I mean, with, question? All due, with all due respect. With all due respect. If your question is, isn't it true the media are covering these things? The answer is, what world are you living in? Of course not. And the numbers. So how did the 80% of the people know about them? Well, because this is the trickle-down theory of news. Ah, I see. That, and that so would if a couple leading, a a the couple daily leading from edge the show. news organizations report on something extensively enough, after a while, even the New York Times has to pay attention. But you can, this stuff is studied, okay? The, the three broadcast networks paid no attention at all, for example, to the well, IRS. And in the New York Times today, their public things. editor actually has to write a piece that says, I admit that we were a little slow to get to it, which has actually been a pattern. But then the, she added on the whole point was that it was partisan phony. politics and that it was phony. Well, you've heard, you've heard uh, President Obama use the phrase climate change denier. Obama is an Obama denier. He refuses to admit that he's been president for the last six and a half years, responsible for, for, for more messes than an incontinent poodle. <laughs> Let me ask you something about the executive branch thing, because... I like that. <laughs> you know, uh, he stays up all day and does these... <laughs> so, don't humor him. It's called preparation, Bob. The payoff I, I, is You said that to me I yesterday. Can I, I mention one thing about the NLR? So, so the Supreme Court decision on the, on the recess appointments, there are actual consequences for that, because when the president made that decision, that put... Uh, basically, they have said that the NLRB, as constituted, was not legitimate. Therefore, the decisions that were made during that period are not legitimate. So you have a, a, a federal policy that continues to be in chaos. And if you take this to the next logical step, Andrea, on immigration, mm -hmm. um, part of the problem with executive orders is that they are not as strong as congressional uh, approval or congressional mm -hmm. legislation. We found that out in Obamacare. Mm -hmm. So now with immigration, do we run the risk of doing some sort of executive order where President Obama forgives people at, at the border now, allows them to come in, and then several years later, the court is going to say that was not legitimate? I mean, that's what I think, that's where I think a real risk is on executive overreach. Yeah, but they don't seem to care, Dana. I mean, yesterday, the Supreme Court smacked back President Obama's, you know, overreach in a very clear way. The, I believe it's the 12th time that the administration has been smacked back by the highest court in the land. Unanimously. And, unanimously, and they don't seem to care. And you have Josh Ernest, and we saw the clip in the beginning of the, uh, of the segment, where he said, we're not going to wait for Congress to write the laws. We're just going to go at it alone. And I would argue that the reason we're having this border mess, where 47,000 young kids have been trafficked over the border or flooding the border since the beginning of this year, is because President Obama's executive order, where he didn't want to deport them in the first place. Yeah, by the way, the Supreme Court did not say, said very specifically, we do not want to interrupt the history of the president's ability to have recess appointments. But, right, Obama, but he was very clear to say that the president cannot say when, this, when the Senate is in recess. But That's he right. is a like, habitually extra-constitutional president. I mean, it is unprecedented the way that he has flouted the Constitution, flexed his muscles in a way that no other president has. Well, can I ask an obvious question, though? I mean, I, I would argue, I, I think that's right, but all presidents seek to expand executive power. That's what they do. Roosevelt tried to expand the size of the Supreme Court in order to do it. 
Where's Congress? That's the obvious question. The yeah. one thing the president can't do is appropriate money. They're totally in charge of that. Why do they continue to send money to fund things they believe are unconstitutional? The, the, because the, they're the, the good worst news, Congress in history. The well, good it's, news it's a pretty about, interesting question. The good news about the border is Nancy Pelosi is actually going down there to greet them, and I hope she brings some gently used <laughs> underwear because that's what they're asking for. The interesting <laughs> thing is... We can all admit things are only a scandal if it involves a Republican. That's what we're learning for the last six years. And with President Obama feeling Trump's law, his philosophy has always been, if it feels good for himself, do it. That used to, be, that used to apply to sex and drugs, but his drug of choice is expansion of power. There's That's how he gets high. I you know, think it was, it was only going a, on. Democrat was only, a Democrat was the second person to impeach the entire history of this country. That was a scandal. Who? Okay, can we talk Bill about Clinton. can we talk yeah. about this situation? I want to ask Tucker and you to comment on something that I think is an interesting conundrum for the president. So he's got Senate Democrats and House Democrats, but let's just focus on the Senate because that's the one most in play. He is saying we can't wait. Um, we're going to go. I'm going to go it alone. That probably doesn't help those particular Democrats in their states. But also, why doesn't he and Harry Reid then let them vote on something? Like, are they afraid? to vote on Keystone legislation? Like, why don't they allow some of the bills that the House has passed to be voted on in the Senate? And then they could actually say then that they passed or failed and the president vetoed or, or, or signed them. Why not just try to do something? Well, well it's... Uh, Harry Reid blocks all of those it, things from it's going to a politics. vote. about politics. I mean, it's... it's uh, look, first of all, why would you want to pass anything the House passed, number one? Uh, number Keystone two... Keystone Pipeline. I mean, Keystone, they have almost... Keystone Principle. But you're no, for the pipeline. <laughs> I am for the pipeline. 99% of people are for I, the And pipeline. I think the reason they're not... They won't allow the pipeline to come is pure politics. You don't right. want to have a vote so That's on. what I'm saying. So the president is playing just as much politics as anyone else. If he really wanted them to be able to do something, Tucker, why didn't they just call well, a vote? Well, First of all, I would say, why would the Senate pass something the House passed? I think that's kind of the way the system is designed to work. Um, but well, if you had a House representative, it was legitimate. So they're just they're they're just illegitimate. No, they're it's, take, it's a whole It was, it was more legitimate when Pelosi was speaker. So drink tea and take gas. So crazy. It's um, not Fox and Friends. So, but let me just say, um, the president actually does not have the best interests of his own party in Congress at heart. He's act, I mean he's. They don't like him when you get right down to it. Talk to a Democratic member of Congress who's not Nancy Pelosi and give him a few drinks, and he'll say, you know what? That guy has never done anything for us, only hurt us. We lost control of the House because of him. He doesn't care in the end what happens to the Congress. That's my theory. Mm -hmm. Do you have a theory on this, Andrea? My, my whole point about, like, why not just let them vote on something, and then he could actually be have, have a legitimate point to say that they couldn't do anything. Because it's not going to go his way, we right. know. And so he doesn't want to look weak and real. I mean, that would embarrass him if a Democratic Senate You're went against You're talking about one him. issue, right? You're talking about the no, five, I, think, I think corporate tax reform. Yeah, I think there's I, a and, number. And I think on the medical device tax, yes. I think they could do that. Um, Keystone Pipeline are those, those three. I would, put, I, would, I would make the Congress do those right now. But also, he's choosing the big money guys and fundraising and where he thinks a lot of this money is going to come in from the environmentalists. That, to him, is more important. Uh, as well, because if he lets them, which he's not going to do, let them bring that bill to a vote, or he says Harry Reid bring it to a vote, you're going to have these angry, rich environmentalists saying, okay, we're not going to give money to your House and Senate races. Or to your presidential library project. Exactly. And so what priorities, people? The presidential library is more important than uh, thousands of jobs. Let's do a quick round on one last thing, which is this idea that uh, House Speaker Boehner put forward this week, based on some new legal developments and some theories about actually suing President Obama. Take a look. This is the 12th time that the administration has been shut out 9 nothing in challenges in the Supreme Court, which is unprecedented. I think this bodes well for the Boehner lawsuit challenging the president's overreach. Today, the president said that they just want to sue him for doing his job, but maybe it's really that they want to sue him for not doing his job. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I, I'm not a big fan of some... The symbolic, you I feel like it's, it's a symbolic it's a gesture. It's kind of like, you know, when Rand Paul did, does the, the filibuster or it's just stuff that's like everybody thinks is really cool, but th does it change anything? And I don't know if this changes anything. I'll have to wait and see, Dana. Okay, you will wait and see. Yes. Anybody want to comment on well, I would, the lawsuit? I mean, it's hard to be against it. Yeah. They on the other hand, something. I would much rather see them defund because that's an agency. That's it's, action. Exa next time they pass an executive order, I don't know. Next time EPA regulates, you know, coal plants out of existence, defund it, a portion it, of the it, EPA. I mean, it how goes, is It that? goes way too far. It'll get shot down the banner lawsuit. And you're right. I mean, the appropriations process is where you ought to play the game. I don't understand why they don't do it. But what, what Obama said was, if they're not going to act, I am. He's exactly right. This Congress has been a waste of time, and it starts with the House of Representatives. You know, I, I, but he hasn't done any. He, again, back to the pipeline. 
Do you know what will end up helping Obama the most, Andrea, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is if the Republicans take back the Senate in the fall, and then the president in the last two years yes. can either sign or veto legislation they send to him, and he could be a hero on a couple of things, but then he could actually say that the Congress isn't able to do anything. Look, you guys gave them control, they still can't do anything. Yeah, that, I, would be, that would be the silver lining of a Republican. No, I, taking I think you're absolutely house. right. But also, but, I think Boehner, contrary to what Bob thinks, is on sound constitutional ground. Typically, I'm not for these Republican gestures because sometimes they do appear as stunts, but not this time. I mean, President Obama has egregiously tipped the power towards the executive in an unprecedented way. People say George Bush did it. This pales in comparison, or what Bush did, pales in comparison, but I do think, Dana, that the courts are going to be reluctant to get involved in something like this. And I really don't think President Obama would care either way what the courts There say. was a big debate during but the Bush PR, administration. It, it's working. During, during the sec, sec, second term, there was a big debate about actually doing these types of recess appointments. And there were um, some people who vociferously argued against it in the council's office. Thank goodness they prevailed or else we would have had a mess, another mess mm. on our hands. Did you enjoy that? That was a lot of fun. Great. But I, I, I kind of tuned out. I was thinking about why. Well, it's what are you Friday. Eat tonight? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's definitely wine night. Okay. Well, <laughs> wine. W H I N E for Greg. Ahead.